This is your girl Andrea Jones, and I am coming to you all with another video. So, this morning I was asleep at a bus stop again, pregnant with my baby here in Houston, Texas. Now, while I was asleep at this bus stop, I saw myself outside of a trailer. There was a trailer that seemed like it was like on school property or church property that it was owned by people who work with the youth and young adults in the community. I recall seeing a young white woman and it looked like some young black women go into a trailer. Now, I had been sleeping outside of the trailer in the spirit. What I saw was they looked into like a little peephole and then they just walked right in. I was like, if I would have known that it was open, I could have went inside and slept inside, but I wouldn't want to get caught on someone else's property. Then the Holy Spirit had me thinking, why would people that are claiming to be so godly and so humane, why would you leave a pregnant woman sleeping outside? When you have properties that you use to help young women in the community. So they ended up leaving me outside while they went inside of the property. There were men, people that work in the community that help youth and young adults. These people were surrounding me and watching me as I was sleeping outside. They did not offer any assistance. I started sorting out a lot of paperwork. I noticed that a group of young black women came around me while I was separating paperwork that had all types of things written on the paperwork. And there were women that were complimenting me on my hair and things like that. And I was like, I'm complimenting you on your hair, too. But how is it that you're complimenting me on my hair and I'm being left outside? Then I recall going to a location with a young black male. And he said that he was in trouble. I did not get to see his face. I was like behind him. But there was this snicker ice cream bar next to him. And I was wondering, I hope they have chocolate. I wish I had a lot of chocolate. And I really didn't know what he was in trouble about, but he was sitting down and there were other young black people, I believe, that knew that he was in trouble. Next thing you know, I ended up in a concert where it was like I was Beyonce. I had like this blonde hair that went like to my shoulders or past my shoulders. They had a little wave to it. I was dressed up like Beyonce with the little leotard. I think it was sparkling and there were these doors that opened up to let me out on stage. And then the doors open up to let me off the stage. And then the elevator takes me away from the stage, from the crowd. So that's how I was coming out to perform. I had my cell phone plugged up behind the doors. And I remember looking at these silver doors that had designs all over it, like these scribbles of black design and stuff, and it was sparkling. I was like, what is going on? Because as soon as the doors opened, I was like, I'm performing? Like, I was literally like Beyonce. I'm like, I'm Beyonce? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, I think the doors almost closed on me. Like, once I realized what was going on, I was almost like, crushed in the doors but I went inside of the doors and there were people backstage there were security and I believe officers so this is an example of kind of how <laughs> I was coming up 
on the stage and how I went back. So I was looking for Beyonce in concert with like doors and elevators. This was the only one that I was able to find because I have to put this video out as quickly as possible. I'm sure she has done so many things in concert that is similar to what I saw. But as you see her kind of coming up you know, on the stage with this elevator, I came up like the, my elevator, I think, was up top and it came down. And then when I was going back, it went back up. I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, it was so fine that I was like, what is going on? Like, y'all got me on the stage like Beyonce. Y'all got me dressed like Beyonce. <laughs> acting like Beyonce, looking like Beyonce, I mean, it was like the best feeling in the world. I didn't even really know what was going on, but it was as if I had already performed already. And then, like, I was leaving to go back backstage, and my cell phone was plugged up, and when I see my cell phone in the spirit, that's how God shows me that he wants me to tell about what I see. We already have worked that out in the spirit to where some things I don't want to tell, but then some things he wants me to share on my platforms. So the security guards and police officers were kind of like about to, I guess, escort me away from the stage. And I was like, my phone, I need to go back and get my phone. My cell phone was plugged up and my cell phone has been dead at the bus stops. So right now I'm inside of a Wendy's charging up my phone because I know that the Holy Spirit wants my phone to be charged. And so what I did was I went to go get my cell phone charger with the security and I saw that I had like a duffel bag and everything. And then I ended up on a, a bus that looked like it was a tour bus. And I had a black and mild in my hand. Now I'm not smoking right now. Sometimes I get the urge to smoke because offset is stressing me out. And I might smoke a little bit in the spirit because offset is stressing me out. But I have not actually been smoking and I'm pregnant. So there was this guy, I think his name, he reminds me of this guy named Corey. And this guy was like, he's a black guy with dreads. He was like, I'm mad at her. I don't, I don't um, F with Andrea because um, she's smoking. She smoked while she was pregnant. And the Holy Spirit made me go off on him. And I was like, don't talk about me. Don't talk about me. I was like, um, don't talk about whether or not I smoked while I was pregnant. Don't say nothing bad about me and whether or not I smoked while I was pregnant. I was like, yes, yeah, some women probably didn't smoke while they was pregnant. I said, but I did. And I said, um... Ain't nothing wrong with me smoking while I'm pregnant. Now, personally, I do believe there's something wrong with smoking while pregnant. And I know that the Holy Spirit has shown me that I don't need to be smoking cigarettes while pregnant. But God also did have my back. And when I was weaning myself from it, like the Holy Spirit has shown me like, okay, if you hit it a couple times or whatever, I'm not judging you, blah, blah, blah. So for people to be like judging me, it's times where the Holy Spirit even showed me like you can hit a blunt, you can hit a black, you can hit this a couple of times and I still didn't even do it so everybody judging me or whatever I'm not hearing it you know um if God is on my side about the baby then what I said to the man in the spirit I said if you if you my friend he tries I'm your friend I was like no you're not I was like because if you my friend then you're not gonna be talking about me talking about I smoked or whatever while I was pregnant you know and I was like you're not my friend if you talking about me, if you see me smoking or whatever, and you talking about me, um, don't worry about what I did while I was pregnant. Don't worry about that. If you my friend, then you're not going to be talking about me. So anyway, I ended up uh, in a location that was dark. I was outside, and it seemed like Offset was approaching me with a female, I think, would have been in his uh, company. Uh, with a female companion or something, and I think he had on like a uh, um, red and black hoodie or something. I don't know, but it was dark, and he had his little dreads and stuff. And 
I had been wanting to know if uh, Offset Dreads was real. And I had wanted to know if Cardi B hair was real because sometimes in the spirit, their hair was shorter and stuff. And I was seeing him, like, in the past, like, when his dreads were shorter. And when we had our first kiss, his dreads were shorter. So I was wondering, like, why do I sometimes see the old Offset, you know, when his dreads were shorter or something? Is it real? And I was like, and then Cardi B had came to me in the spirit one time, and her real hair was shorter too. So I was like, why is um, you know, uh, she why they come to me sometimes they hair different limps and stuff. So um, in the spirit when he would come to me, he would like uh, first I need to tell y'all what I had prayed about before I had went to sleep. I prayed about something about us, but. Really, I have just really kind of been wanting to move on. But anyway, uh, it was something about me wanting to start just dating other men. And uh, I have family, friends, and enemies that always try to run up behind any man that I fuck. They always try to go run up behind any man that I fuck. And then these men just be falling for it. So it's like, well, how men is when it comes to women that's loose, They'll just, most of the time, if they female won't keep her legs closed to their enemies, their friends, and their family, they'll just be like, fuck her. She's for the streets. So, it's like, I was saying with men, if you gonna just be fucking everybody, then you for the streets. So, it's like, I cannot force no man to be loyal to me. It's people that's jealous of me. It's women that want everything that they see me have. Like, they want to suck my vagina juice out for the man penis, you know? And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm going to fuck you once, then I guess I might well pass you to my dolls. You know what I'm saying? I might well pass you to my fam. I might well pass you to my friends and the enemy. I fucked them. Now y'all can have them now. I'm finna move on to the next one. It's up to you to have some discretion and be like, yeah, we got other people that we fuck. I got other people that I fuck, but I don't have to fuck her enemies. I don't got to fuck her friends. I don't got to fuck her family. Or else she gonna look at me like I'm for the streets. So I was like, you know, being that Offset is not really showing me loyalty amongst my enemies, my friends, and my family, you know, and I know how they use. They always going to try to run up behind any man that they see I'm dealing with. I was like, I guess this is how I'm going to have to deal with these men then. I'm going to just have to fuck you and pass you to my dogs, you know what I'm saying, and let them do do what they're going to do with you, you know what I'm saying? And so I ended up seeing him, and I had said, this is what I said to the Holy Spirit. I was like, I'm not going to disrespect men, but you show me how to treat you based off of your actions. So if I'm just trying to have a good time, I want men in my life that I have a stronger relationship with than others where I want to travel. I want to have a good time. You know, I might want to... lay up with you, you know, and I feel like if you married, your husband can just dog you out any old kind of way, and then he want to have control over everything that you do, you see what I'm saying, where he want to keep tabs on you all the time, where you can't really do things that you would probably be doing if you were single, so I was like, if he not going to be the man to bring me that happiness, then we might well just cut it off, you know, and so I had said to the Lord, I was like, well, if he can't be the man that I can chill with, go out with, have a good time with, if we can't, you know, take trips, you know what I'm saying, have a good time, if he can't bring joy to my life, I don't got to be uh, in no serious relationship with none of these men for me to have a man that I kick it with every now and then, that might not be uh, a super pass around, you know what I'm saying, every man is different, but you got to be ready to let go if you see that they not on your level and they just bringing drama into your life. So I was like, if I said, can I be one of those men that can, you know, shine in my life, have a good time with me, then I don't want him in my life. So all of a sudden I seen him coming to me in the spirit in the dark and I was like thinking, why is he even coming in my direction or whatever? So he was like, man, he was like, I, I don't feel comfortable. He was like, I don't know if I feel comfortable dating a female 
who uh hair is uh who who my hair is longer than hers. So his hair is actually longer than mine. So the Holy Spirit will confirm me, yeah, you do be seeing his hair short at different times in the spirit, but it is his real hair. And Cardi B, you do be seeing her hair short in the spirit, but it is her real hair. Her hair longer than his. So I was like, okay, well, if he feel uncomfortable dating me because he said, I don't know if I feel comfortable. I was like, well, if he don't feel comfortable dating me because my hair is not as long as Cardi B's hair, then... Let's just end it right now. You know what I'm saying? I said, because we've been doing this for too long. I said, oh, one thing is, oh, Andre need to fix her face. Oh, Andre need to fix her teeth. Oh, Andre ain't got no money. Oh, Andre needs to get in shape. Oh, Andre needs to fix her attitude. Oh, uh, now it's Andre needs to have her hair all the way down to her behind. I would like to hell with that. You know, I ain't got damn Rapunzel. So, you know, and then they be abusing me, abusing my hair, making my hair fall out. The whole time that Cardi B done grew about six, eight inches to her damn head, they been abusing mine, making that much fall out my goddamn head. So imagine how I feel as a black woman being abused, and then a nigga talking about, oh, your hair ain't long enough. You ain't having, you ain't having me nowhere where I can wash my hair, condition my hair, oil my hair, take care of my hair. You taking care of the light skin one. And y'all know that my hair was growing last year in the Galleria, and it done broke off since then. So how much would my hair have grown if you would have been treating me just as well as you was treating Cardi B? Ain't nobody letting me go to the shop. Ain't nobody flat ironing my hair. Ain't nobody putting no avocado mask on my hair. They been setting me up, trying to set me up to be murdered for the Ku Klux Klan, abusing me from head to toe. And said they was raping my uh, little boy to death and was abusing me with a baby. And it's alive in me. It's $180 million lawsuit about this baby and $70 million about my little boy. So I was just like, you know what, God? I said, man, I've said been doing this for a very long time. I said, if he's not ready to uh, take me serious, then I don't want nothing to do with him. Uh, I was like, if he's not ready to, uh, if he don't love me the way that I love him, if he don't feel the same way about me, the way that I feel about him after all we've been through, I even said, if he ain't ready to marry me, then I don't want to see him again. If he feel that Cardi B image and her hair and all of that make him feel like he want to be with her and that's the one who he want to marry, I said, that is fine. Because I may not have long hair, but it's men out there that I could spend time with that it make me feel good about myself. And so I was like, if he really want to be with Cardi B, if she the one who he want to stay married to and if she the one that he picture himself with because she got longer hair than him, I said, well, then let them go on about their business and I'm going to act like I don't even know them. And after I win my case, I'm going to erase all the videos about him off of my channel. And I said, and I still want to win my case and I don't want them no, in any way affiliated with my case. This is because when I try to cut off offset, they start abusing me even more and he know about it and he be in on it because he be trying to cover up stuff about what happened between me and him and then he be trying to retaliate on me and so this is why I said that I still want to win my case if they go on about their business that mean leave me alone let me win my 250 million dollar lawsuit and you and Cardi B go on about y'all business and be lovers so um, I was like, who was the female companion? Because it was dark. And I was like, why would he be bringing a female companion? So another thing he had said in the spirit when he was on the way, he was saying, uh, I don't know if I feel comfortable dating a female. I was like, we ain't just dating. We passed. We're going to be past dating. We done got all the way up to the point where you was calling yourself my baby daddy and uh, I'm damn near wifey and shit. So we way past dating. I don't want to hear you talking about you just dating me. And so um, that's when I was like, okay, why he was bringing another female companion? He was like, well, I don't know if I feel comfortable dating a female who my hair is longer than hers. And he was like, um, but I want her to know as soon as I come up in there, type of man I young, I want to fuck off rip. Soon as I come in there, I'm going to have sex with her. As soon as I get inside of the apartment or as soon as I get inside the house or whatever, I'm going to start fucking her. So that's like the first time you meet, you know, he's, he was telling me like the first time I come up in there, 
you know, ain't no, you don't want to have sex, la, la, la. We're going to do it immediately. Well, this was after I heard some females say something like, why he built like that? Why he built like that? And this was after he was saying this stuff. I don't know if I feel comfortable uh, dating. I don't know if I feel comfortable dating the female who my hair longer than hers. So his hair longer than mine. And then... I heard him or some female like it female be talking about why he built like that, why he built like that. And then I heard him say something about uh it ain't always how it look on TV. You know what I'm saying? I keep telling these women that the way that a man look on TV is not gonna necessarily be what he look like in real life. Just know that as soon as I come in the door, as soon as I get inside, I'ma fuck you off for real. That's just the type of man I am. I don't have a problem with that. I actually got turned on. But my thing is, I'm like, what could they be talking about? About why would women be saying, why is he built like that? I done looked at Officer Body a million times in videos and pictures and everything. And I love his body. And I have looked at his body in the spirit. So I don't know uh, what these women is talking about. But I feel like it was just a backup from the Holy Spirit. Like, okay, you want to judge women talking about how long their hair is. But a woman is going to be looking at you trying to see how you built as a man. You see what I'm saying? So the judgment is going to come on both sides. So if you can't accept your woman about how her long her hair is, she might not accept the way you built. Because that's the first thing that I do judge a man about when a man try to make me seem like I'm not better, that I'm not good enough uh, for him, and that another woman is better than me as I look at his body. And I be like, mm, well, I could find me another man that's built better than that. And it's true. It don't matter how long my hair is. So the bottom line is, if we're going to fuck with each other, he needs to accept me for me. And I need to accept him for him. That means that uh, except my femininity, regardless of how long my hair is or what I'm shaped like or whatever, and I'll accept your masculinity, regardless of what you built like or whatever. So I just basically said to the Lord, I said, well, if he ain't ready to take it to the next step with me, if he still got to be wondering about somebody how and all that old kind of stuff, I was like, then we can just kill this. I said, because I'm tired of mentioning him. I'm tired of being humiliated on my channels. I don't want to be humiliated, humiliated no more about the situation. And I said, so if he want to be with um, Carter B on that note and he don't want to be with me, he still want to try to be judgmental and everything. I said, then let them go on about their business. Let them be. Let them be. And I'm going to uh, remove all the videos about him after I win my case. I still want to win my case. And I don't want them no way affiliated with my case. And then I was like, but what was the female coming for? Why would he come up in my home? If you're trying to be with me, why would you come up in my home with another female? And it was dark, so I really couldn't see who the woman was that he was bringing. So I was just like, you know, that's pretty much the last straw for me is if you're not ready, if you're not taking me serious at this point as the woman in your life, then that's it. I don't want to see nothing else about you. I don't want to see nothing else about her in the spirit. I'm not fooling with y'all. And then there was something about me moving on. So I basically was just like, you know, I did not feel the same emotions for him. So there was a time when I would get extremely horny just thinking about Offset kissing me, touching me, or whatever. But when I think about these other men now, you know, because men come in different shapes and sizes, you know, just like women have different hair lengths. Women got different body shapes. We come in different colors. We got different personalities. You know, where a man will at some point in his life desire to be with different women. It don't matter how comfortable he is with one woman or whatever. And as females, I feel like women are a lot, uh, a lot of the time misunderstood where if we not being fulfilled with one man, we could still have desires as well to be with other men that are different, different shape, different color, different body, uh, um, shapes, different colors, um, and different personalities. So 
with the way that Offset have been abusing me with other women and stuff like that, I noticed that I started getting very horny, uh, tingles up my spine just thinking about um, some of these other men kissing me, touching me, making love to me, and it was not like that. At first, it was like all I wanted was him, and he was the only one that was making me feel that way. But while he was trying to hide the relationship and fuck on everybody but me, my feelings started changing. Now, the only way that I started getting horny for him again was when I was like, okay, well, if he's so satisfied with her, because they both got long hair, then let her be on top of him with her long hair and him sitting there making love to her with his long hair, then how would I feel with my big old booty coming into the bed and saying, uh, hey, Offset. And I, would, I started getting turned on. I was like, yeah, so it is something that's still there, regardless of if you feel like I'm not uh, – shape like Cardi B or I don't look like Cardi B or whatever. I was like, but it shouldn't take for me to have to walk in on you and Cardi B in order for me to feel like I'm turned on by you. You know what I'm saying? So I thought about it again if I felt turned on by him one-on-one. And I couldn't imagine him kissing me no more uh, one-on-one. I could not imagine him touching me no more. You know, like the desire that we had, God said he was my man. So the desire that I had for him as my man it changed, you know. Now, when he said that I'll come in there and fuck you, like, right away, that kind of turned me on a little bit. And I've been being trained not to desire him because they've been trying to abuse me to try to stop me from wanting to be with him. So I was like, well, I'm desiring these other men. You know, I'm desiring to be with these other men one-on-one. And like I said, if he want to be with Cardi B, then let them have their marriage. I'm not going to get involved. I'm already super turned on thinking about being with these other men, and we're going to leave it at that. So I fell back to sleep. Then I saw uh, a, like, brief... It looked like a brief vision of Offset, and he was so sad. He looked so sad. Like, I ain't never seen him look that sad before. And I was like, what's wrong with Offset? Why he looking like that? And I was like, something is wrong. Something is really wrong. And I was like, God, what's going on? And so uh, that's when I saw uh, myself in the spirit, and I was on the phone with somebody. I had got on video phone. This phone was different, like it wasn't even my phone. And I had held the phone up to my face, and I was like, can you see me? And all of a sudden, I ended up waking up. There were cars swarming past me, and the way they are swarming past me is they trying to stop me from seeing or hearing anything in the spirit or remembering anything in the spirit because they know that I'm famous. They know that my soul and my spirit is intertwined with all of these other celebrities and with information about me winning my lawsuit. So they trying to like try to play me like I'm some mental patient where they want to try to control me and mentally abuse me to try to stop me from winning my case so they were swarming pads like vroom then somebody come and vroom then they come again and vroom while I'm trying to sleep so I could not remember who I was on the video call with and I tried to think about it but I just couldn't remember and I was like God I was like who was I on the video call with and I said please don't let this have nothing to do with my little sister Shakina because Shakina be trying to run up behind Offset Shakina be trying to run up behind anybody who I fuck with my little sister you know, she be on some jealous shit. She, like, she be getting on my nerves. So after I had seen Offset, I was like, I don't want to see nothing about my little sister, you know, trying to undercut me with the man that I love. I'm tired of that shit. So when I had went back to sleep, I ended up in this location, and there was a woman that was there, and she was leaving me in her house while she was going to work or something. And so she was like, um, basically, I'm leaving you in my house. I'm about to go, blah, blah, blah. She would treat me like family. And I ended up getting a phone call, and I was on the phone with Cardi B. Now, remember, I told y'all, I said, if he ain't ready to take it to the next level with me, I don't want nothing to do with them, period. So I see him all sad and stuff, and then all of a sudden I end up on the phone with Cardi B.
So we on the phone and we talking. She was just like, yeah, girl, you know, I could picture her over there with her little long hair and shit, you know. And she was like, yeah, girl. She was like, um, you know, the stuff that I went through with my baby daddy, you know, because yesterday I had released a video saying that he had told me, Offset told me that he wanted to just be with me when I took him back after we had broke up a few times and all of this was in the spirit and I was like the uh, God told me that he don't want to see me move on he didn't want to see me move on so that's why he was trying to manipulate me by you know and telling me that he was that he only wanted to be with me the Holy Spirit was showing me he do feel this way about you but he don't want you to move on so he not treating you the way that he's supposed to be treating you because he know all your business and when a man know that you not living your life to the fullest he could try to manipulate you where all the other women don't treat you how you're supposed to be treated now when he don't know all your business that's when a man get right so remember I had told y'all that he was coming towards me with a female companion and I was like well what he gotta bring her for I believe it was Cardi B so I didn't tell nobody, but Offset and me was in the spirit, and he was up on my behind. Like, he was being my man in the spirit. And I believe it was Carter B right there, and she was looking like, what the hell is going on? Because you know they married. So imagine how it feel to see your husband right there with his woman, and you like, what the fuck is y'all doing? Right? So me and him had went into the bathroom out of her face. And we kept doing it. Like, he was up behind my butt, massaging my butt, making me feel good. So she came inside of the bathroom and looked. And then she was, like, looking like, "Uh uh-uh, hell no, I'm finna go. And she uh, said to him, like, I'm finna go over here or whatever. And then he knew that, you know, her feelings was hurt behind seeing him being my man or whatever. And me being his woman, you know, us, you know, loving up on each other. And we didn't want to hide it from her. So he grabbed her face and started caressing her face, you know, to let her know, yeah, I'm right here with Dre, but you know that I care for you and I'm going to still be there for you. I'm going to be uh, the man to give you what you need, your affection. Don't worry. And she, I got a little jealous because I'm like, that's my man. I don't want him stopping what he's doing to me to touch on her face or nothing. Don't try to console her about shit. But that's not how the Holy Spirit works. So while she was getting jealous, he touched her face and she tried to run from him, like pull her face away from him, like, uh, don't touch me. But the Holy Spirit made me say, don't run from him. And then I grabbed her arm and I was like, don't run from me. And I was still bent over and he was still behind me. And he was touching her and I told her, don't run from him and don't run from me. So, like, you need to stay present with us why this shit going down. So, I'm thinking we finna start doing good. And right after that, I'm seeing uh, in the spirit, my little sister, uh, all these women running up behind him, everybody talking about they fucking him. And I'm just like, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? And so, I ended up seeing like some other rappers or whatever. I ain't gonna say their name right now because I'm gonna wait till God bring us deeper into something or whatever, but I ain't gotta mention you. God don't tell me to mention you, period. So there was some other rappers and they had showed up when I found out that he was fucking all these different women. And God was like, they over here bringing their homeboys because they want to fuck Andrea Jones. Like, he was like, they want to fuck her. She be shaking her booty, you know, and she be turning them on, and they want to see what they pussy him like, or whatever. And I was like, but I got to be attracted to them. Like, some of their friends they was bringing around, you know, they was good, you know, but they was not, like, handsome, and I like to have sex with handsome men. That's what the Holy Spirit was saying, that, I'm going to look at a man's face when he fucking me, and I want him to be handsome. You don't want to mess up in that condom break. <laughs> and then you end up having a baby by somebody, and then you be like, ooh, <laughs> you the one who having sex with him, and he wearing cute. So that's your fault. <laughs> you going to have to deal with that ugly baby. 
<laughs> now I'm just saying our babies are cute, but you have to be sure that that you want to deal with that person. Like, are you gonna be proud of yourself for having a baby with that person? You know, are you gonna be able to have any sort of longevity in your relationship if you wasn't really attracted to them to begin with? If you end up getting pregnant. I'm a strong believer in you should have sex with people that you are genuinely attracted to or that you are genuinely in love with. So after I seen what I saw about the other women, all these other women, that's when I was like, no, God, I don't want to do it no more. I was like, I can't do this no more. Just replace him and bring someone else into my life. And then I started seeing stuff about all these prostitutes and you know, it was just too much for me that I decided that I was going to end up walking away. I did pray about it uh, briefly, and I started seeing something about, um, this was a video I posted yesterday, and the Holy Spirit was like, well, that's not what he told her. Like, basically, all the prostitutes and the other women, he basically was telling me when I took him back that he was not going to be messing with all these other women. That's what he told me. So I ended up on the phone with uh, Cardi B. And she was telling me, she was like, yeah, uh, she was like, you already know everything that my baby daddy have uh, taken me through. You know everything that I'm going through with him. And I remember seeing this photo of him, and it was another woman that was with him not too long ago. I think it was last year or the year before that. And they was talking about they was uh, going to some party with Drake, and he was photoed out with this girl. And I'm like, that ain't going to be what the hell going on. So when she was talking to me, it seemed like she was basically telling me, like, we're not even together, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got a photo out. Like, I'm like, well, what is you doing? I'm like, well, you got him photoed on all these uh, photographs with you and the kids. You got him. I'm, I ain't say this to her, but in my mind, I'm like, he's walking around in photographs with you, holding the babies, you know, and y'all making it look like y'all really together. But the way she was talking to me on the phone was like, we really not even together for real. So she ended up having like two other females on three way. And I remember the females telling me, uh, she was like, Cordy was like, to one of these is other baby mamas. She had like two other females on the phone, and I know one of them was his uh, baby mama, another baby mama. And I said, now, you know, he's married to Cardi, but the other one, I don't know what their status is, but I know they have children. She got on the phone with me and Cardi was like, ain't he over there? He, he been over there fucking you. He been over there fucking you, right? And I was like, in my mind, I really don't care. But I'm going to let you tell me what you feel you need to tell me. So she was like, yeah, girl. She was like, he was just over here fucking me. And there was another one on the line, too. That's when I heard a third voice. And she was like, yeah. And he was over here fucking me, too. And I just started thinking about the asses and stuff. I'm like, oh, they must got some cute little asses, you know, or something. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. So I was not really phased by it. Like, I was showing respect. I'm glad that they felt like they could open up to me as women and tell me that he over here fucking us. I already know he fucking out. If he not in my pussy, then he's fucking somebody. Offset has not actually physically had sex with me. So I'm really not bothered by the fact that he might be having sex with baby mama. Because you got to understand, I have a baby daddy. I broke up with my baby daddy because of domestic violence and because he was molesting my son and set my baby up to be murdered. But if it was the shoe on the other foot, I'd still be fucking my baby daddy if all of that shit wouldn't went down between me and my baby daddy if he was not, like, you know, abusing me and my son to that extent to where I hurt him in self-defense. Now, I'm not going to sit there and knock nobody, you know, that's still fucking their baby mama unless you get into a relationship with somebody and y'all change the shit. Hell, I might fuck your baby mama with you. You know, the thing is, that's not going to make me feel like, oh, I stopped loving him. That's not going to make me feel like, oh, he, he was not serious about saying that he really wanted to be with me. 
So to me, it make it feel like you just kind of tattletailing a little bit, you know, but I'm glad that you are telling me you need to be telling me because when a man don't want you to know that I'm still fucking my baby mama, then it is like you playing both sides. So I was kind of glad that they told me the truth, but that don't mean that that's going to run me off because I found out that he's still fucking his baby mama. That's not going to run me off. I already pretty much figured that he was. The only thing that's going to pretty much make me stop dealing with him is God because I have prayed about it and I said that if he's not going to uh, take things serious with me to the next level, then go ahead and end it. And obviously the Lord is not ending it if he got me on the phone with Cardi B and all of his baby mamas and they over here trying to tell me, what you telling me for? You telling me like I'm his woman. God said I was, so that's why you telling me what's going on. If I wasn't his woman, then you wouldn't feel the need to tell me about him being in your pussy. See, it seems like women don't want me to feel special. You know what I'm saying? They don't want me to feel special. They don't want me to feel like he'll ever change or treat me right. But my thing is, is some of the things that one woman may not have been able to deal with, I might be able to deal with certain things differently with him than how you were able to deal with things. So... Um, even though things may not have worked out between him and Cardi B, like when she's saying, well, you know how he did me, you know what I'm going through with him, but I've been going through it with him as well. So you ain't been the only one going through it with him. You just been the one that's been closest to him and I have not been there, but I've been going through finding him with prostitutes. I've been going through the drama that I've been going through with him and Cardi. I'm going through the drama with his baby mamas now with them telling me that they having sex. So I'm going through the drama as well. You're not the only one. But if God want me to give up on my relationship and move on, then that's what I'm going to do. Now, what God is showing me is that I don't need to be telling him all of my business about other people in my life or what I'm doing. Because I've been telling him too much about what's been going on. But as far as if I still deal with him after I win my settlement, if he still be my man, if God want to bring me and him together, then I'm going to have to just deal with whatever he been doing with his baby mamas. If he been fucking them, if he keep fucking them, if we got to go through that for years, then that's just what the fuck we going to go through. But if God have me cut him off, then that's what it is. So far, God have been for me an offset. And so we'll see how the Lord work the situation out. If he break us up, then we going to break up. That means that y'all can have them to y'all self. So anyway... After that, I remember um, she was basically, they was telling me, yeah, he was over here fucking me. And it's almost like she wanted to describe to me what they was over there doing. So basically, she would let me know, like, he was over there fucking the shit out of uh old girl or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, he was over there fucking the shit out of him. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that did make me feel a little tinge, you know, of like, anger a little bit like oh for real you know for real and so uh Cardi just seemed like she was unfazed by it because she was like yeah he over there fucking you huh he was over there just fucking her girl yeah he over there fucking him so basically this what Cardi B is dealing with is that he over there fucking his baby mamas I already pretty much knew that was what happened because when I was saying that I wanted him to start having a different dynamic with his children other than uh, fucking his baby mamas and stuff, I did see that he started doing better as a father to have a better relationship with his children. And I was like, okay, so that means he's fucking his baby mamas and he's fucking her too. Because I know what I said and I know what the reaction was. And so, and I know how many kids he got. So I don't know exactly which baby mamas he's still fucking or if he's fucking all of them. So anyway, uh, she just seemed unfazed by it. She was like, uh-uh, I don't even care. She was like, uh, you see what me and him going through or whatever. Like, basically, why would you want to take yourself through? Um, or why would you think that he'll change, you know? Look at what he uh, taking me through. He over there fucking them. He just got done fucking them. They on the phone telling me that he over there fucking them. And then I'm like, oh, for real? But I already know how he is. I already know how he is. So that don't really surprise me. So um, 
after that, uh, I, I need really need to step out. Y'all, they just got this one dude. He just uh, came. He's black guy. They just he just came in the parking lot and he just sitting right up in my motherfucking face. Young black guy. He just listening and that shit is so fucking uncomfortable. So I was like, let me just come outside. You know what I'm saying? Because if you want to hear what the fuck I got to say, get on my channel and listen to the fucking video after I post it. Don't sit up in my motherfucking face the whole goddamn time trying to hear what the fuck I got to say. Now anyway, let me watch my stuff too. So um, basically. She was just like, you know, you know what he been taking me through. And the other baby mama was like, yeah, he was over here fucking me. And he over here, he just fucked her the other day. I ain't never been with him yet. I ain't never been with him. I ain't never actually fucked him yet. So, you know, it's it's up to the Lord. I'm going to pray about it. You know, so after that, um, me and Cardi was talking, and I saw the little love and hip hop scene about why Offset uh, wanted to be with Cardi B the most, or something like that. And it was something about love and hip hop, you know, the hip hop shit. And then how they made her look all urban, you know. God was showing like, look how they got her with little earrings and makeup, and you know, hair. And God was like, I could work on your image, you know, I can get you good. But then he was showing like. Look how they got you looking all on your channel, abusing your image on every video, on all of your channels, all them videos. He was like, she ain't got her hair done, makeup done that well. And then she got on a little lipstick, little pink lipstick, gold lipstick, whatever, you know. And they got Cardi B with full face of makeup, hair, affiliated in the industry. You know what I'm saying? But God was like, don't worry about that. I'll fix all that. I'll fix all that. I can work on your image. I'll fix it and I just kept talking on the phone to Cardi and she hung up the phone so when she had hung up the phone I was like what all of a sudden I just got a dial tone and the lady was leaving that to go where she was finna go who house I was in and she was like I need you to fix you a pizza and I need you to fix some of them uh noodles in there to go with it because they over here starving me and I'm pregnant and I'm extremely small so I was like, okay, I'll make the pizza, I'll make the noodles and everything. And somebody was outside smoking uh, cigarettes, and she had came and put the cigarette out before she left. And I had went out there to see if it was a little half a cigarette or something left I could hit. And I seen that it was, but I ain't pick it up and smoke it, but I wanted to. And then I had started to dial Cardi back. So I had, you know how you got the caller ID? I had turned on the caller ID and I saw the number that she called me from and it looked like a a a a a a a or something like that in the spirit like I don't know the actual number I don't know the actual number but in the spirit it was like a regular house phone and so I had called her back and I was like she was like hello and then I was like Cardi and she was like yeah and then I said uh my little sister, hold on, my little sister was poking her head out of the back door. So my sister just came out of nowhere like a demon. And she was all crouched down on the floor and smiling and trying to come out and spy on what me and Cardi was talking about on the phone. And so I had pushed her head in the door like real hard and slammed the door like, move, go on about your business. Stop being nosy. And so um, all of a sudden... Uh, I had started talking to Cardi and I was like, I got to ask you some questions. I said, why you hang up the phone? And she was like, oh, I got tired. I accidentally fell asleep. I was like, oh, so you that busy? So where you that tired? Were you falling asleep all on the phone? And she was like, yeah. And I said, okay, well, I was like, I need to talk to you real quick. I need to ask you three questions before you fall asleep. So she was like, um you know, basically kind of getting sleepy. And I was like, you listening? Then I said something about, uh, you miss me? <laughs> I was like, you miss me? And she was listening. And it almost sounded like she was like, yeah, you know, or something. And I was like, uh, all right, I got another question. And I forget what it was that I asked her. Um, but I remember the third question. And then I was like, you, I was like, you miss me rubbing and touching on you, kissing on you in the spirit. 
and then she got real quiet and then all of a sudden this bird like big bird but it was white with a beak just popped up in my face and the eye was gone like the right eye was gone and it had uh it had a patch of uh bandages over it and like like fresh blood and then that's when I knew I was like damn they want to cut my eye out and then I was like uh I was like fuck and I was like, I forgot that they don't want us talking about what's happening in the spirit and then when I woke up the Holy Spirit was like that's why she didn't answer you on the phone because remember when I showed you that oath that she took to the Illuminati where she was throwing up 666 with the right hand and then she had her eye closed like they'll take her eye out and I was like, uh, I was thinking like, y'all yeah, remember? And the Holy Spirit was like, that's why uh, you seen that pop up. So if she answer you and tell you, yeah, I miss you touching on me and kissing on me and rubbing on me in the spirit, she's basically violating her oath that she took to the Illuminati, which is the Ku Klux Klan. They the ones that's trying to hurt me. So... I had, uh, oh, no, I remember what I had said. I said, do you miss me? And it's almost like she was trying not to tell me, yeah, like like she wanted to tell me, yeah. But then I had said, uh, uh, you want me to call Beyonce? You want me to get on my line and, uh, and, and, and holler at Beyonce and them? So I would basically let her know, like, I'll get on my YouTube channel and I'll tell Beyonce that I want to put it down on her. She gonna come running. <laughs> I was like, you want me to uh go get Beyonce or one of them other females? And so I was just messing with her. And then the third question, I was like, uh, when I had said you want me to get Beyonce, I had seen Beyonce in her little shorts, and she looked excited. <laughs> she was looking sexy. Then a motherfucker too. And I was like, God damn, Beyonce look good. You want me to get Beyonce? And then the third one, the third question, I was like, you miss me uh, rubbing on you, touching on you, kissing on you in the spirit? And then it's almost like she wanted to tell me yes. But before she said yes, that little thing popped up in my face with the eye gone. And I was like, damn. You know, so when I woke up, I was like, oh, she can't tell me that she missed me, you know, or that she missed how I was touching on her, kissing on her in the spirit. Or she gonna be violating her oath. I was like, oh, okay. So I just prayed about it and I was like, well, Lord, you know, I pray that you show me how she feel, that you uh, show me through your Holy Spirit how she feel. That way she can't get in trouble for telling me how she feel because you told me um, how she feel. Now, what I can tell y'all is that at the beginning of this year, I was basically seeing that Cardi B was down there in love with me, you know, and we was all rubbing on each other, kissing, and, like, we was in love. But Offset was breaking it up and kind of coming between us and Illuminati and these people that's trying to hurt me about my case and everything. So one thing I want Cardi to know is that I ain't buying down to you because she was trying to tell me to buy down to her and Illuminati because she light-skinned. My thing is, is that if I love you and I choose to be with you or I want to make love to you, it's not because you light skin. It ain't because I'm bound down to you. Now, the way I make your body feel might make you feel like I'm worshiping you, but that's not what's going on. I'm just making you feel good because I love you and I'm attracted to you. But ain't no, ain't nobody uh, going to be able to say that I'm worshiping you because you light skin. I want everybody to know that if I'm with Cardi B, I can get with uh, plenty of other light-skinned women, but I choose to be with her because that's who I want to be with. See what I'm saying? Now, hold on, because these people all up in my face, they over here coming inside of the restaurant so they could be up in my face, and they fucking up the video of what I have to say while they doing this crap. So I had got horny. I had got horny while... um. I was thinking about uh, touching on her. I was like, when I was like, you miss me? Like, you miss how we uh, kissing on you, rubbing on you? How I was kissing on you, rubbing on you, and touching you in the spirit? I was thinking about uh, sucking her titty. I was thinking about, like, 
uh, just playing with her nipples with my tongue and everything and sucking on it and turning her on, you know. So I started getting horny. And then, so, um, I started thinking about uh, Beyonce a little bit, you know, like, you, you want to treat me like that? You want me to call Beyonce? <laughs> but uh, for real, after I got done and I woke up, I was like, um, well, I'm going to tell Cardi uh, what I want to do to her, like, right now. So, basically, I ain't really turned on right now because everybody in my face and it's hot. I had to step out of the restaurant. But earlier, I was real turned on. And I just want I want you to have nothing on, no panties on, Cardi B. And I want you to uh, sit on my face. And I want to eat your pussy <laughs> while you uh, sitting on my face. And I want to squeeze your booty and everything while I'm licking your pussy, making you come. And I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna say nothing else right now, cause everybody all in my fucking business. But after I get my money, after I get my settlement money, nine times out of ten, I'm gonna be uh, with Cardi B because the Holy Spirit was showing me uh, with a three hundred million dollar net worth that's something about Cardi B being my girlfriend. So I mean, if she wanna fight the Holy Spirit. That's probably the only way that it's not going to go down. But, oh, they over here messing with me. Oh, okay, they was wondering where I'm at because my stuff. I had to step outside, though, because as what I was saying, I wasn't going to say that in front of everybody. You see what I'm saying? But um, after I get my settlement, pretty much me and her, we going to end up being together, so... With us having uh, feelings for the same man and everything, then, you know, that's fucked up. People don't need to be doing it. Um, I don't have that much time to be uh, making my videos and stuff for people to be doing all that. And I be thinking about what I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying, before I even do that. And if me and her, we been beefing and shit for a long ass time. So if I want to come out and say, you know, how I feel and the type of affection that, you know, I want to have for you, then I don't want people trying to fuck all that up because I can be mean and I can be beefing with you, you know. But instead, I'd rather make love to you. And that don't have nothing to do with Offset. Also, what I said to her, I said I still want to have the same kind of relationship with you. So that means that whatever happened between me and him, if me and him break up, or if me and him end up being together on a more serious note, I still want to have the same type of relationship with Cardi B. And I'm sucking her titties, I'm kissing her, I'm eating her pussy. That's my girl. I still want to have the same relationship with her regardless. And I don't want nobody to get in between that. That means if whatever she going through with him, that don't have nothing to do with me. That don't have nothing to do with how I treat her. Whatever I'm going through with him, that don't got nothing to do with how he treat me. But all they trying to put us against each other about a man, and we both can get other men. That's uncalled for. So whatever happened between me and I was saying, huh? I was saying that don't have nothing to do with me and Cardi B relationship. So whatever we've been beefing about, I'm finna kill that shit right now. We're not finna keep beefing about him. Every time you try to beef with me about him, I'm gonna just tell you. Uh, the shit that I want to do to you That I want to fuck you I want to eat your pussy You know what I'm saying And I get even more graphic if I had to But y'all not finna be making me uh, Beef with Cardi B no more That's it So anyway y'all I'm in the West Chase area uh, It's called West Chase I'm in Houston, Texas And they over here trying to fucking set me up They got me over here uh, Begging their ass for food Pregnant with a baby Trying to starve my baby For the Ku Klux Klan And they damn They got all the black people In the community involved They got us begging them For breakfast, lunch, and dinner They got the women shelters involved And I need a lawyer So that I can win my lawsuit They trying to kill a baby That's alive in me So go through my channel And look at all of the videos of the paper alive I'll leave them in the description box and you're going to see all these restaurants around here trying to stop us from being able to get food and they got me sleeping at a bus stop surrounding me at a bus stop 